Hello and welcome to the unofficial Bike Social Sofa and we're going to talk about three bikes that we've ridden in the last week uh, that may divide opinion but certainly going to divide what, what they stand for. Uh, John, you've been on the Harley Davidson Sport Glide first of all, that was where, Tenerife? Yes, and straight away I want to say how angry I get with the <laughs> fact that whenever we post something about Harley Davidson, you just get this torrent of abuse of people going, it's rubbish, it's a tractor, it's this, it's that. I bet half a man ridden one, probably not even that. Yeah. Or if they did, they rode one in the nineties. Or there, there's a Steve always used to say this to me that there's you you ride a Harley in a different way, and I I kind of didn't always get it. I, I remember when I started the last job, and actually working with Steve, that I, I borrowed a Harley Davidson and uh, took it home about fifty miles, and uh, I was had to plan the overtakes, and I just thought this just needs more, and that was a tuned one. But you do have to be of a different attitude to ride a bike. And the, uh, the Sport Glide, we were riding it through Tenerife, yeah, and it was, it was great. And I think the way they did the launch, which wasn't typical of a launch, where it's normally a dangerous riding competition, uh, it, they just took it easy. We had some fast stretches, but on the second half, we, we just had a real good, easy going ride. And you're just looking around going, this is awesome. This is why bikes are awesome. I'm just sitting here doing it. The difference with that bike was that, as Harleys go, <coughs> it handled pretty well. And uh, I, what are the what are the headline stats? What's it called? It's called Sport Glide. It's a Sport Glide. It weighs three hundred and seventeen kilos. Jeez. People are going to shout about. Yeah. Uh, it <laughs> makes dry. Uh, that's ready to ride. Right. Yeah. It makes eighty four brake horsepower. Now Harley never want to put out their uh, mm. power, power figures. figures, but it's one hundred and forty five newton meters torque. Uh, it is torquey and it sounds a bit tire shreddery to me. No, no, it just drives. You're not going to blast past stuff like you would on a sports bike. But uh, finding that it, it would pull really nicely. We were overtaking plenty of people uh, in Tenerife. There are obviously a lot of sightseers and that, but you could just go past, no problems. You could also leave it in second, third, fourth, or on the motorway, in sixth, whatever, and just loads of drive. You can just be lazy with it. You can relax and just enjoy <coughs> riding rather than obsessing about the bike. And the difference here is, I think, that it felt completely like Harley Davidson. And again, people on social media were going, oh yeah, so <laughs> well, shame they haven't changed it. No, it had that beautiful character. Uh, but they've, the, the, the engine is mounted solidly in the frame. So they've got two uh, balancing, uh, balancer rods in the engine. Um, so it's smoother, but then they made the uh, I mean, idle doesn't, speed. It doesn't vibrate as much yeah, as you'd expect. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't like, is, it still like, boom, boom, boom. is it still air cooled or is, it, is this from water cooled? They're precision oil cooled. <laughs> um, which, so this isn't a water cooled one, that's only yeah. on the big ones with the big fairings. Yeah. The precision oil cooled ones have oil coolers that go, uh, it's oil around the valves. Uh, and it's just within the head. Uh, so there's a small oil cooler at the front of the bike. And is this one now, is this, is this a single shock now, or twin shocks? Maybe? It's a single shock, yeah, single it's my shock. I, I was going to leave you jumped ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's good. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely excited about the bike. Uh, but the, it's the, um, that, that engine, they lowered the idle speed, so you still get that thump, thump, thump. Uh, it sounds good, it looks like a Harley, which I think is a good thing, but it's so beautifully clean. And I hate to use the marketing buzzwords that seem to be going around at the moment, but this, I think, is probably one of the most authentic bikes I've ridden. In that, it's a genuine progression of an engine that has a real history, and it's not, they've gone, okay, we've made this new engine, but look how it looks like that one from the 60s or 70s. You can, you can follow the progression of the engine. Mm. It's so clean, and yes, the handling, as you go into corners, it doesn't feel like it's gonna fold up in the middle. The brakes are fine, they're not too sharp, you wouldn't want them really sharp, the suspension's fine. Uh, it's such a heavy bike. When you hit a, a pothole, you can feel it really jar because it's got a lot of work to support that that um, frame, the whole bike. But it's just so enjoyable to ride. And uh, I just wish people would stop moaning and go to a Harley dealer because UK Harley dealers are so accessible, aren't they? They're so, yep, cool, come along, have a go. And you could just turn up there on any bike, go with some mates, just have a trip out one day, just go for a ride to the local Harley dealer and just say, I'd like to have a go on one. What's the price? It's 14, about 14 grand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd have to check. It's probably about there right now. What would you see, my question, sorry. I was gonna say, what, <laughs> what would stop you from buying one then? S simply money. Yeah. So, personally, I, I own a Tech KTM 1050 Adventure, uh, and I still love that. It's still uh, one of the bike that gives me everything I want it to. But I, if I had the money, I genuinely would have one. I used to think I'd want the Harley 48. Mm. 
but this bike, it's so this one has removable panniers, removable uh, fairing. Fairing didn't make a massive difference, really. But panniers were good, and yeah. you take them off, and you can't see any rack on him. It's, it's more a practical. versatile bike. Yeah. Thought, yeah. But um, t I haven't ridden the other soft tails in the new range, yeah. but it's, this is basically a, uh, a low rider um, with a few slight changes. The same engineering team that did it. Uh, and it's really made me want to ride the other soft tails because I think there's something in there that I think that's the Harley for me now. So Harley bought out, what, eight soft tails, haven't they? And then regionally, yeah. when, they, when they bought back by September, what, September yeah. of, um, of 2017, and then they saved this one until Eichmann at the Milan show beginning yeah. of November, right? So they're yeah. like a separate, almost like a separate launch. Yeah. They're genuinely good bikes, and it's the finish. Mm -hmm. uh, so I used, some Harleys I've sat on, you, you think, oh yeah, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool, and then you look at it, it looks very agricultural for some of the engineering on it. <coughs> the, the welding on here was so precise and so intricate. And I think the progression Harley Davidson has made recently, so with its Street 750 and the Street Rod, uh, they're good bikes, but they're for a different market. And I think if you get one of those things, ah, oh, this is Harley Davidson evolving, oh, it's not really a Harley Davidson as I perceive it. Great for a different market. But these new soft tails really are an evolution for, for the Harley. So the quality thing's interesting because mm. that, that's my question because I've, I'm one of those people, 10 years ago I didn't like Harleys and I've yeah. gradually got to like them and the more I ride and the better Harleys have become because although they look the same, ostensibly as they always did, yeah. you know, the last 10 years the engines have got better, the fuelings have got better, the handling's yeah. got better, the brakes have got better. All the things that people used to criticise Harleys for on the whole aren't a problem anymore. But the last few Harleys I've ridden, they still have that kind of you look at the finish and the exhausts just look a bit too rusty a bit too quickly and the bolt yeah. heads look a bit too rusty so i'm really interested if that's what they've changed if they if the finish has got better obviously it's too early to say if the finish mm. is going to last and certainly with some of the machine that's got uh new wheels that were directional wheels which is the first part of the from the factory wheel. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they go in that, that direction way. yeah uh, no they're 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 swept for spokes cast wheels but they're yeah. swept forward to look like they're moving when it's stationary they just look cool um, but they're black machined faces and you think oh, it's not going to be great in winter but you don't buy one of these for winter no. and they called it a commuter a, cru a cruiser commuter and a tourer and of course we got lots of reviews going oh, that'll be crap in London well yeah but it's, it's actually not that massive and it's not as nimble as a 125 or a, a CB500 or something like that but you, you could do a fair bit on it yeah. There is no but the thing with them is, bike, you have to. The thing I always find with Harleys is you have to learn to ride them, and, and I don't mean that. Uh, somebody I used to work with used to say, you know, when I used to say, if you only ride a Harley, you get used to it, and you, you know, somebody he used to say, yeah, but if you only ever eat gravel, you get a taste for gravel, <laughs> and, and he's kind of right. But the point is that you wouldn't jump on a sports bike if you've never ridden one and expect to be able to go and do a, you know, a yeah. one and a half minute lap round Cadwell. You know, you have to. You have to get used to a Harley and you have to work out the right way to ride it and the right way to corner it. And I've found in the past, once you do that, they are really enjoyable and you can get through town, you can get through traffic, you can, you know, you can have a really enjoyable time on a, on a twisty B road. It's just a very different experience. And yeah. like you said at the beginning, you also have this thing of you can just sit back and ride around and enjoy the scenery. <coughs> I loved and it. It was a bike, you could, I genuinely think it's a bike you could be proud of, yeah. as are many bikes. But it, it's a beautiful bit of engineering. It's got a pillion seat as well. It has, yes. Uh, not a big one. Yeah. Uh, it's certainly no electric glide. Um, but yeah, yeah. yeah it, so, I'm going to say, so we failed to divide opinion on that one. Okay. <laughs> Panigali then. Pan it's yeah. too expensive. It's yeah. not too expensive. Man alive. <laughs> I tell you what, <clears throat> on paper, everybody's going to look at the price, you're right, and see. It was the S that I rode, which is the middle of the three. So the entry level um, Panigali is, is um, just a shade under £20,000. Yeah, yeah. Many are going to balk at that. But, How does that you know, compare to the How much more expensive is that than the, than the 12 99 it replaces? Uh, a bit. <laughs> but it's the same price, as, but it's a modern day bike with a whole yeah. new level of kit. Um, it's the same price, or it's a few quid more than the uh, Fireblade, the SP Fireblade, for example, and the R1M. Yeah. And again, they've kind of, they've really, I hate this phrase, taken the electronics on to the next level. Yeah. Um, and what I guess blew my mind was when I first got on the bike was how extraordinary everything was. Not only the chassis, not only the level of, of grip you could uh, you could attain at, level, at turn one out of the pits, um, but the the refinements that they've done they've made in this brand new engine, the the new V4, 
and the the technology that was underneath it all as well, the electronics. It just it's just such a beautiful bike. And actually, when you when you start piecing it all together like that, when you when you take all the jigsaw apart, and you look at how much care and attention uh, and development, both time and process, and and the and the quality of the components as well. And you know they talk about it being MotoGP derived, and it's and it's very advanced. And 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 you get to feel as though actually yes, that is true. Uh, I'm never going to be able to find the limits of what it can do. I don't think many will, in fairness. Um, but what it did do is allowed me and everybody else who was on the launch, it kind of cared for us in a, in a kind of security blanket kind of a way. It, it, somebody else said you'd be a fool if you'd be able to crash it. Because it's so advanced, because it's so good, like the, the so, so cornering is that, ABS. Is that thing. because of the electronics or is it because of the chassis or the package? Or the, One thing that fascinates me with this bike, and I, because I've never ridden a bike, that's got this. I've, I've ridden V4s, I've ridden sports bikes, but I, I've never ridden a bike that I know of that's got this crankshaft that runs backwards. Mm, mm. And, and all the things I've read about it say that this helps it steer quicker. It has yeah. the same effect as having lightweight wheels. Yeah. For example. Yeah, did, yeah. Did, did, do you feel that or is that...? Y yes, I think you can. I think it's, it's hard to pinpoint one thing that makes it turn faster or, or, or have the grip on the apex or even find the damn apex. Um, the whole package together, kind of all, 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 you know, everything comes together really nicely, all as one, which I guess is the, the entire purpose and point of, of designing a bike like that and taking three years as they did to do so. Um, they talk about the gyroscopic effect of a, a, of a reverse rotating crankshaft, uh, which is supposed to um, allow more power to be laid at the back and, 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 and stop wheeling. I mean, it has a wheelie control system on it already. Uh, which is really quite effective. There's three riding modes, um, uh, street, sport and race. And in race, you do, you, it's a hard job to wheel it, that's for sure. I mean, you can just crack the power on. Come, uh, not, a, not, not when the bike's picked up either. And everything just works. It's has, like it pro, has it got a pro wheelie function for those of us who can't do wheelies? <laughs> has it got a levy? <laughs> and it just goes like that. So it helps, yeah. yeah. Maybe that's in the next that's version. What power does it make? 214 horsepower. <laughs> Which is about 211 brake horsepower. That's a weird thing. I think earlier on when we were chatting about this, or we were saying what bike would you have, and I think that I'd get more enjoyment out of the Harley Davidson. Because mm. when I rode that Fireblade last year, it was amazing, awesome thing to ride. And I, I rode that at Portimao on the launch, thought it was brilliant, loved it. But on the road, under 100, it's just not much fun. You're second gear, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, you're not getting in, even in second gear, yeah. you were over 70. Before the rev started coming, yeah, then before yeah, you started getting yeah. into power, you're like, oh. Yeah. But it is, and I, I think if you say it's too expensive, what would be your closest analogy in a car? Well, that's it. I, I, and I'd said it in the review that it was uh, that new McLaren Senna, which is about three quarters of a million quid. But the point is, <clears throat> that is a massively advanced motor car, and it's and it's got mm. all of the bells and the whistles. Yeah. Um, they're probably magnesium cast as well, and 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 it's just such a refined thing. Mm. It is. It is the car that so much development has gone into, and I, and I think that the Panigale, uh, the V4, is, is, is the motorcycling equivalent. How does it compare to the Aprilia? Because I've, I've ridden the Aprilia, I've, obviously I haven't ridden the V4 yet, but I've done a few miles on Aprilia V4s. So mm. How does it compare to that? Every, every time I talk about the Ducati, I just want to want to emphasise the fact that everyone should go out and ride it, because it's so good, as in it is just so modern. Yeah. Uh, or we'll, even, we'll be able to, will dealers have demonstrators? Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they've got the stock and the S model in it already. The Speciale version is limited to 1500. Yeah. I think they've all been sold. Uh, and that's 35 grand. So that's the same as the, yeah, that's the same as the app guy in um, Twin, the, the final edition. Yeah, but, but it's trick. Yeah, and it's, you know. So I just think that it, it compared to any other motorcycle I've ever ridden uh, is, is so advanced. I think it as a motorcycle is, is just covers all bases at the moment. Everything that we can expect as motorcyclists has been Every box has been ticked and, and, and then some. It's just like it's it's so much more advanced than anything I've ridden. Yeah, and I guess we forget, don't we? You know, me riding around on my 1600 pound phaser and John on his KTM, you know, we, we forget that actually 25,000 pounds sounds like a ridiculous amount of money mm. to me, but there are plenty of people out there who've got uh, who, who love that kind of bike so much and can afford that and it's not my job to say whether or not no. they should go and buy it's it. Fine. It's fine, I think the, the deal at the moment they're offering is, uh, or the PCP deal is £255 a month after a five and a half grand deposit. 
Um, it's an incredible level of performance, isn't it? Ah, it's sensational. <laughs> yeah, but it's but it, it's you know, 211 brake horsepower at whatever it's 13,000 RPM. Yeah. It's uh, it's an incredible thing to hear. It's an incredible thing to feel. Yeah. But also, it's it's the way in which it lays it down, yeah. and it's also the way in which it stops as well. Because yeah. of course, if you can get to 180 miles an hour in the blink of an eye, you can you got to be able to rely yeah. on it to stop and, and then yeah. turn. And I suppose and put, it, it, put it in some kind of context <coughs> as well. 15 years ago, I spent the most money I've ever spent on a bike. I bought an RC30 dream bike. Always mm. wanted one, bought one. Um, if you want to buy an RC30 now, a half decent RC30, 25 grand, something like that, for a half decent one, that makes 90 horsepower at the back wheel, weighs about the same as, as the V4 Panigale. So for, for the same money, you buy a brand new Ducati with a warranty, and you get more than twice as much horsepower and the same sort of weight. Um, and you can get back tires for it as well, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So actually, in that sense, it's a bargain. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. And then on the other end of the spectrum, uh, Honda Goldwing. So you went to Austin, Texas, and it was remarkably cold. Yeah, we went to Austin, Texas, which is normally about 20 degrees at this time of year, um, 20 degrees Celsius. We got there, and it was about 20 degrees Fahrenheit, which is it was minus 8 overnight. Good grief. Um, but to ride the new Goldwing, which was, again, it's another bike that divides a lot of opinion. It's a bike I've kind of ridden occasionally. I rode the 1500 version years ago when I was first a journalist. I've ridden the 1800 a couple of times. It's never been a bike that's been on my radar. I, I like the big Harley Tourers. I like the idea of a big comfy tourer, but all the Goldwings I've ridden in the past, I kind of, I like them, but I never bonded with them. Um, this new one, uh, they've kind of done a fire blade to it. What they did when the fire blade came out and then and it was, that much lighter and that much sort of sharper than everything else. The new Goldwing is um, 37 kilograms lighter than the old Goldwing with the top box. The one without the top box, which we aren't getting in the UK, is 47 kilograms lighter. Um, you know, th so 37 kilograms lighter than last year's model. You think about it, that's a couple of medium-sized staffies. Yeah. You know, a couple of small dogs. Um, it's, that's a lot of weight. It's also, it's not actually much shorter, as in the wheelbase isn't particularly much shorter, but they've They've built a new, brand new engine for it, it's still 1800cc, it's a shorter engine. Um, they've put a new front suspension on it, which is no longer telescopic forks, it's like a double wishbone, a bit like the kind of Hossack front end or BMW mm. dual lever. And the difference with that is that, whereas telescopic forks, when you brake, kind of go like that, this thing, just the wheel goes like that, if you like, it just, it just goes straight up and down. So because it doesn't do that, it doesn't shorten the wheelbase, the engine can be further forward, which means the engine can be, it, it's already a shorter engine and it's further forward, which means they've got a longer swinging arm, which gives more sort of high speed stability. Um, it's got more room, it feels roomier when you're on it. It's a, it's a sort of, everything's shorter, supposedly, but it feels more roomy. Part, that's also partly because the wishbone suspension, the handlebars mount in a different way. So the handlebars, on the old one, they're like bigger, long handlebars, like a, steer it like a tiller. Um, these are sort of shorter bars a bit further away from you and so you've just got much more room you're closer to the screen which is now electric mm. so again because it's electric you they don't need this enormous old blade that they had they've now got a smaller screen that goes up and down um, I got really enthusiastic about it as you can tell, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> and I really enjoy riding it so what happens to the suspension when you brake if you're braking hard does um, it, it just sit yeah, yeah, like the, no kind of yeah, like the BMW system, really. Um, it's there is a little bit of dive, and I think they build in dive, I think, because it, it makes us comfortable because that's what we're used to. But there was one situation I had on the on the launch where one of these weird American unsigned crossroads, and I was sort of just behind the lead rider, and he braked last minute. I didn't really see him brake until the very last minute. Um, I braked really hard on this thing that weighs it still weighs 370 kilograms. And, and you just, you can almost hear the tyre gripping. It's really weird. You brake really hard, emergency braking, the ABS doesn't come in, it just kind of goes <laughs> And you come to a halt and you think, wow. On a, you know, on any other kind of big touring bike with telescopic forks, you do that. The forks immediately kind of crash down onto their bump stops. The ABS comes in, you kind of look like that. And if you're lucky, you come to a halt without ending up on your crash bars. Um, this thing was just, it's just really, really, confidence inspiring to ride. Um, the other new thing with it, um, it's, uh, the engine's all new. Um, it's now um, four valve, four valve cylinder, four, four valve heads, um, so it makes a little bit more revs, um, re holds onto the revs for longer. They've gone down to single injectors in the fuel injection. Um, 
which all so basically it's, it's kind of smooth it's a latest generation fuel injection got modern traction control oh. it's it's more powerful 10 horsepower i think more powerful it's smoother it's easier to use and um, the fueling's lovely but the real big change is that it's now got a dct gearbox option oh. which was interesting for me because i went there thinking that's exactly what a goldwing needs because um, I like DCT um, and I thought it's going to be brilliant on that. You've got four modes of four engine modes, um, basically two different gearbox modes. So you've got touring, um, sport, and then you've got an economy mode and a rain mode. Basically, in DCT modes, in touring, it gets through the gearbox quite quickly and holds on to top gear for a long time. Sport mode, it hangs on to the lower gears for longer and then you know, it doesn't sit in top for longer. And I actually found sport mode, which I usually like on DCT, on the Goldwing just felt a bit odd. It just, the Goldwing shouldn't be, you know, holding on to fifth gear for longer, or sixth gear, or seventh even, because it's a seven mm -hmm. speed DCT. And it just, I, I ended up sort of using touring mode a lot, or I'd use sport mode, which selects your sporty suspension and sporty throttle, but use the gearbox in manual, and then just sort of change it myself. Um, there's all sorts of things with it. And like a Goldwings of old, you you need to spend a bit of time on it, learn the bike, and work out which settings suit you best. Um, the other change they've made, the other real big change they've made on this, is, is that um, a little bit less luggage capacity. And the thing I really like is they've got rid of all those kind of knobs and buttons. You know, all those old gold wings where it looked like some kind of 1970s telephone exchange <laughs> come synthesizer thing. Um, and now it's just got really really slick centre console with a sort of car rotary type thing and a few buttons and then pretty much everything's controllable on the left hand handlebar. And how much is it? <coughs> Two versions coming to the UK. <laughs> the the manual gearbox version is twenty six thousand and the DCT version is twenty nine thousand. Uh, now again that's more expensive than the outgoing model. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot of money. Um, but it's it's a lot of bike. It is a lot of bike. And pound for pound. It's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, 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 actually, yeah. yeah, I mean, if you, were to, if you were to weigh in your Panigale for scrap <laughs> and you were to weigh in your Goldwing for scrap, you'd be happy you bought the Goldwing. Yeah. Um, it's one of those things. I think the difference with this bike is that of previous Goldwings, you couldn't genuinely say, this is my only bike and I'm going to ride this. This Goldwing is manageable enough at low speed and easy enough to ride at low speed. And you can filter on it. You've always been able to filter on Goldwings, but you can... You That's know. a skill, surely, isn't it? Uh, it's close no, your eyes, because <laughs> they're really well balanced and they're not that wide. Um, they, they look wider than they are. So it's um, not like that scene from that Batman film where it just ploughs the cars out of the way, <laughs> is it? No, it doesn't. <laughs> and they just, you know, you, you could genuinely use this every day you could ride you know you could ride maybe not through the middle of london because london gets yeah. narrow in all cycle lanes but not everybody but lives in london do no they? exactly and you, know, you could use it uh, you know a lot more and again this thing the the kind of the the losing a bit away and the dct and the the front suspension makes it much more balanced a lot of these big touring bikes when you come down to a standstill you know kind of when you're losing that last mile an hour at walking speed mm. they become very top heavy and very cumbersome and very clumsy and and the new wing doesn't you can kind of go down to all the way to sort of walking speed and and even that thing where you know you come to a set of traffic lights and you think i'm just going to see how long i can sit with my feet on the pegs before it starts to top yeah. you could do like you know a couple of seconds and it's just really nicely balanced and you know, it's really it just it settles well when you brake. It doesn't kind of bounce all over the place when you let the brakes off. It's just it's a really easy bike to control. Yeah. Um, still, you know, needs a bit of thought before you do a U-turn on it because it's 374 kilograms. <laughs> Which is we worked out the other day. It, I think it, it's basically the same way as two fire blades, pretty much. Wow. So you know, and you think yeah. you know, that's sort of puts it into perspective. Um, but it's a big tour, isn't it? And they, they are three very different bikes for very different markets, aren't they? And actually, that probably is the thing that annoys me about this, when bikers are meant to be this all-inclusive brotherhood, um, whether it's men or women, you know, it, it, we're meant to be all looking after each other. Yet, for something so supposedly inclusive, it seems really exclusive. Yeah. Somebody gets really arsy if it's a bike that they don't understand mm. or that they don't ride or they don't appreciate. Surely we're all riding. Bikes. Yeah, and the thing with the wing, everyone says the, the first the first cliche everyone comes up with when you talk about gold wings, oh, it's a car. And yeah, they, it's not a car. <laughs> and you know, it's still it, honestly you can. I mean, I've ridden wings you know, through London quite happily. I've ridden wings through most towns actually yeah. quite happily. And you can you can feel you can do all the things you can do on a bike. It's, they, you know, they're great. They're just lovely things to be on. Yeah. They're just a different kind of bike. Yeah. You know, I think you're right. Reputations tend to stick, don't they? Yeah. So yeah. once the Golden or the Harley or the D 
the Ducati. I mean, I've, you look at some of the comments on the Ducati video, the review, and they're still talking about it. Oh, does it rattle? Is it going to fall apart? Yeah. I think. Well, the rattle was a dry clutch. They dropped the dry clutch <laughs> yeah. ages ago. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. like that noise. Here's my other question with the Ducati. One thing I noticed in the press pack, it, this, the V4 doesn't have belts anymore. So, so all that thing about owning a Ducati yeah. and having to have your belts changed every year mm -hmm. or whatever it is. So, so it's now got cam chains. Mm -hmm. Is that right? That's right. So why did they... I, why... Why no belts? Why well, are we going to change? I had a chat with uh, the head of engine project management, uh, Marco Sairu, and he said it's all to do with the longevity of the engine. So they have a 15,000 mile Guinness um, uh, service uh, interval, um, but it's all about making sure that the, the MotoGP derived um, functionality of the engine, as in because so much torque and stress is going through the engine, it, revs of 13 or over 13,000 RPM and it produces so much power and so much torque. Uh, it's all about making sure that the, all the components in the engine come together and perform as best they can for as long as they can. Because yeah. in GP, you don't have any kind of homologation rules, so you can use, I use gears instead of anything. Yeah. Um, so they needed to just move on from belts just to make sure that the, uh, the engine performs at its best for as long as it can. Yeah, interesting move mm. for Ducati. Mm. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, of course, especially with that counter-rotating crankshaft. Yeah. So, yeah, those components, like I said, they've really thought about what they wanted to do with this bike and uh, by switching from two to four cylinders for a, their, their first, the first time they've made a 4AM to a sports road bike with, uh, with a V4, it's, um, they've, they've done a marvellous job, really good. So do you think our one message from this is... Stop moaning, go and have a go yourself. <laughs> All bikes are cool. All bikes are cool. It is interesting, I think, certainly with Harley and Ducati and, and Triumph, a lot of dealers these days make it much easier to get test rides on bikes mm. than, they, than they used to. Mm. And I think there is that. As, as, as we get this kind of differentiation of bikes, and you know, we, there are seemingly more different versions of bikes and different types of bikes around, yeah. if it's easy to get a test ride, we should go and do it, really. Shouldn't we? And and I know it's the, you know, it's easy for us to say that. You know, I'm not going to go and spend twenty nine thousand pounds on a gold win this week because I'm even on PCP and all the kind of offers they have, I probably can't afford it. <coughs> but I'm still really curious to ride one in the UK, and I'm curious to ride a Panigale, and I'm curious to ride any Harley. To be honest, because yeah. I like. So, if there's anything particular you want us to talk about uh, in the future, then just put it in the comments section below. Uh, but in the meantime, you can read all of our reviews and uh, all the other good stuff that's at bikesocial.co.uk.